In this video, I'm going to show you three mistakes, three very common mistakes that people make with their email. And I'm going to show you how sometimes those mistakes can get you in a lot of trouble. Hi, I'm John Grubb from 4kcc.com. Come on, haven't subscribed yet? Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. We publish computing-related videos all the time, and I don't want you to miss any of them. So in this video, let's take a look at those three mistakes I'm talking about. Let's talk about the three common email mistakes. One starts with misguided thinking. What do I mean by that? Here's an example that I hear from customers all the time. They say, I can just use an easy password. No one wants my email. There's nothing in it of any value. Believe me, I do hear this all the time, and it's misguided thinking. Here's the correct thinking. There are plenty of goodies in your email that a hacker would love to get his or her hands on. Don't kid yourself. Here's what they might get. They might get your banking information. They might be able to figure out where you bank, and then they can narrow down trying to break into your account. They can find the name of stores where you shop. Again, gives them a heads up of where they can try to break in. They might get your address book, and this could be very bad. Why? Because they can then use that as a resource for sending spam emails or as a means of sending phishing emails to your family and friends. This happens all the time. In fact, if you look, we have a video of how to fix a Comcast account that's been hacked. And we're gonna have more videos on other platforms, not just Comcast. It happens all the time. And this is why it's important. How do you fix this mistake? Simple, create a very strong password and keep it safe. If you have a Microsoft account, by the way, like Hotmail, Live, Outlook.com, you can eliminate your password completely. And I have a video that tells you how to do that. So you might wanna check that out also. Remember, next to your financial site passwords, your email password should actually be your strongest. All right, let's take a look at mistake number two, not updating your recovery information. Many times when you set up an email account, bank account, etc., they will give you a way to reset your password should something happen. But here's something that I run across with my customers all the time. They need to reset their password. They forgot it. They got hacked and a hacker changed their password. Whatever the reason, they need to reset it. They go to reset it and it wants to send a code to an email address and they'll say to me, John, I don't have that email anymore. Or they'll want to send a reset code to a phone and they'll say, John, I don't have that phone number anymore. That's a major problem. I've had customers who have had to completely get rid of an email address and create a new one because they could not recover their password. So the question is, are the recovery emails and phone numbers that you have in different accounts, are they current? Here's how you fix the mistake. If you change phone numbers and or email addresses, log into any account that relies on this information for password recovery and make the changes. Now, I know what happens. People don't think about this. They forget. But this is very important, and this is the way to fix this mistake. So if you have recovery information for an account, you should write down the list of accounts that use recovery information to get your password. And then if you do change your phone number or your email address, go in and fix it and update it. All right, mistake number three, not using two-step authentication. First of all, here's how two-step authentication works. And almost every email provider and financial sites now, almost everyone 
allows two-step authentication. It works by sending a notification to a mobile device. So generally what happens, either a number will be sent to your mobile device or you'll enter a number from your mobile device on the computer that you're trying to get onto and that will allow you in. The theory is that a hacker is probably not going to have your mobile device. So if a two-step authentication is sent to your mobile device and you enter it, most likely it is really you trying to get in. And by the way, if your provider allows you to use an authenticator rather than just text, use the authenticator. It's way more secure. And I have a video on the Microsoft Authenticator, how to download it, install it, and use it. And there's a Google Authenticator. There's an Adobe Authenticator. These apps are more secure than text. And so you should do that. So how do you fix this mistake? Easy. Sign up for two-step authentication on every account that will allow you to do that. That's it for this video about the three common mistakes that people make in email. I hope you're going to avoid those mistakes, not get yourself into trouble, and just make email work a whole lot better for you. Thanks and have a great day.